This is a continuation of the talk about diabetes and I'm trying to explain it in very simple terms because as we know the simplest things are usually the hardest to understand. Type 2 diabetes was usually found in the past in adults only but it has been increasing in children for several decades now. Popular opinion is that it is caused by excessive food and lack of exercise. This brings us to the key in understanding diabetes. Balance. The amount of ta food taken in needs to equal the amount of energy going out. A child cannot eat a tremendous meal and then just sit around. That would cause him to need more insulin. The student cannot use insulin and not eat. It is a powerful hormone. If a child takes insulin but then skips his meal, that's a big problem. It could cause the blood sugar to drop dangerously low. Too much food is not the only thing that raises blood sugar. Other causes are too little insulin, our emotions, and sickness. The normal range, I don't know, they keep changing it every few years, but the normal range used to be between 70 and 120 and that's in non-diabetics. Now if you have type 1 diabetes the normal range would be 80 to 180 and if you have type 2 diabetes the normal range was considered to be 70 to 140. So you could see that anything over 200 would be a problem. The causes of low blood sugar are too little food, the meal has been delayed, too much insulin, or illnesses such as vomiting and diarrhea. Students with diabetes should always be under observation, always. Never be sent alone to the office in the school. If they arrive to school in the morning with a low blood sugar, give them four ounces of juice or three teaspoons of sugar or two teaspoons of honey or glucose tablets or a regular soda. That means not diet soda, but soda with sugar in it. Then we rechecked their blood glucose after 15 minutes. If it's, if it's okay, then we give them a normal snack. Sometimes the blood glucose goes so low and the student is so groggy that he can't swallow because it might cause choking. So if the doctor has ordered it, they would need an injection of, of glucagon it would be given in the thigh muscle. You can even give it right through the clothing. Sometimes the blood glucose is so low that the child will have a convulsion. Don't panic. It's just the body causing the muscle to twitch to try and release some glucose that is stored in the muscle. The glucagon is a hormone and causes the liver to release glucose, usually within 10 minutes. As soon as the student becomes conscious and can swallow, give glucose in some form. He still needs 911. Of course, if he has a seizure, you turn them on their side you protect their head, you loosen their collar, and don't put anything in their mouth. If they have, if they have high blood glucose, 
and no ketones in their urine. Then you can have them walk, even in the room, just walk back and forth and drink a lot of water. If they do have ketones in their urine, then no walking. Doctor's orders are different on each child. Some have a sliding scale in which the insulin changes according to what the number of their blood sugar is. Some use a syringe to give insulin, while others use an insulin pen or a continuous, when needed, insulin pump. There are even many counting their carbohydrates and giving insulin according to how many carbohydrates they ate. Since children are growing, their insulin doses may need to change from time to time. It's very dangerous to change the insulin dose. It depends on the type of insulin given. Slow, quick acting, when is their phys physical education course, when is lunch, changes in the scheduling of insulin needs to be in writing from a doctor and a parent. We used to give three trainings a year to the health clinic assistants. The first one, which was this one, was longer and involves the teachers, the parents, the health clinic assistants, and the backup people. The other two trainings in the school year that we had involved just health clinic assistants and backup personnel. Of course, any personnel was welcome to come. So this last video that I just did, that I'm doing now, was more about school health. And things change all the time with diabetes, with new discoveries. Just keep in mind, if something sounds very difficult and complicated, don't just forget about it or give up. Just keep studying it. You might find the right teacher. You might find the right book, the, my vid the, the right video, because we each understand things better in, in different styles. Maybe what I said will help you, maybe not. Maybe you need another type of teacher. But keep studying it. One day everything will just click, because this is very important to know. Let's say you don't have diabetes, neither does your family. Well, you might run into somebody in public who has it, and you'll know what to do, and you might save a life. Think about it.